Picture this. You are the President of the United States of America. And you are, uh, and before you, you are seeing your country being ripped into at the height of civil war. And you are faced with the great task of preserving the Union and of reuniting the country. That was President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States of America. President Lincoln was president in a time of great unrest. He was president at the time of the Civil War, which for those of you that don't know, the Civil War was the bloodiest conflict in American history with 620,000 casualties. So, President Lincoln, for those of you that also did not know, suffered from depression. He was unhappy, he was, he went through a line of life, he was depressed. And he, he, what was happening in the country was breaking his heart. Not to mention that he suffered a lot of heartache from the fact that he lost his young son, Willie, in 1862 to, to an illness. And that absolutely tore up his wife, Mar uh, Mary. So fast forward to 1863, the war is in its third year. Um, a lot's going, a lot's going on. Um, and no, no commander that Lincoln places in command of the Army of the Potomac can seem to, uh, can seem to defeat Lee's army of Northern Virginia. As Lee keeps uh, eluding them. Um, General Joseph Hooker suffers defeat at Chancellorsville when his army is cleverly outflanked by General Lee in May of 1863. But Lee, Lee suffered from this victory too. He lost his most trusted lieutenant, Stonewall Jackson, General Stonewall Jackson, who, who cleverly outflanked the Corps of Oliver Howard at Chancellorsville, but Stonewall Jackson was tra tragically killed by his own men. So, fast forward again to June. General Lee draws up the plan to invade the North a second time after his first invasion of the North in September of 1862 that resulted in Antietam. Failed. So, he draws up the plan to invade the North, this time through Pennsylvania. Lincoln replaces Hooker from command of the Army of the Potomac, and he replaces him with General George Meade, who is from Pennsylvania. And General Meade enters hot pursuit of Lee's forces, and they, uh, they meet on the field of battle in July in a small, Pencil in a small Pennsylvania town called Gettysburg. The the soldiers that fought the battle at that time they had no idea that what was going to happen was that Gettysburg was going to turn into the bloodiest of all American battles in American history. And the battle would last three days. And on July third, eighteen sixty three, General Lee attacks the center of the Union line at the Emmitsburg Road in a, in, a, in, a, in an event that would become known famously as Pickett's Charge. 
And if you know anything, you know that Pickett's charge utterly failed. Very miserably. And Lee's army would effectively turn back and was forced to retreat back across the Potomac into Virginia. So this event's happening, and at the same time, out in the West, General Ulysses S. Grant is working tirelessly to uh, to take the the river town of Vicksburg, Mississippi, and and General Grant lays siege, lays siege on Vicksburg. And, um, uh, well, v Vicksburg succumbs to, um, succumbs to the siege, and on July 4th, at the, around the same time, the day after the Lee's army was turned back in Gettysburg, Vicksburg falls, and the Confederates in the city surrender to Grant. Also, if you did not know that Vic losing Vicksburg was a significant blow to the Confederacy because Vicksburg was the last major Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River and taking Vicksburg for the Union meant that the Confederacy was effectively cut in two. And the Union now controlled the entire Mississippi River. <laughs> so we fast forward to four months and Lincoln is tasked with um, writing a speech because he's going to visit, he's going to travel to Pennsylvania and visit the the battlefield and he's gonna visit the cemetery where they will dedicate the cemetery where the soldiers are gonna be laid to rest. And dedicate the battlefield where the soldiers fell on the field of battle. And keep in mind Lincoln's ill, he's not well. He's not feeling well, he's ill, and and um, he's tasked with writing an address, and this address is only 272 words, but it will mean everything in American history. So he's on a train on the way to Gettysburg, and... And there, there's a lot on Lincoln's mind. And he's watching his country be ri being ripped apart. He's watching his fellow countrymen kill each other. In, way, in ways that have never been seen on a battlefield. At least not in a long time. Not like this. And Lincoln writes this speech intending to honor the dead that fell on the field of battle at Gettysburg, but not only that, but throughout the Civil War that fell to preserve the Union, which was Lincoln's dream as president. So, if you did, also didn't know, it's around this time that um, out in the West, Two months prior, in September 1863, uh, General William Rosecrans is turned back by the Confederates under General Braxton Bragg at the Battle of Chickamauga. And the Battle of Chickamauga became the second bloodiest battle of the Civil War. And now, <clears throat> fast forward again to November. And the city of Chattanooga is under siege by the Confederates. Chattanooga, of course, Chattanooga during the Civil War, a lot a lot of the time was under Union control, and now it was under siege of Confederates from Lookout Mountain. And now Rosecrans is replaced with General Ulysses S. Grant in that area. And Grant is working now to try and try and break through the siege and crack the Confederate line, force them out of, away from Chattanooga. So Grant has to open up a cracker line to feed his troops. And he has to get together with his generals and he's got to say, hey, this is what we got to do. We got to figure out how we're going to defeat Braxton Bragg here because we are we are beleaguered here in the city of Chattanooga. 
So we got all that going on, and at the same time that Lincoln's now in Pennsylvania about to deliver this address. So now the date is November 19th, 1863. Of course, Lincoln didn't, Lincoln didn't really officiate the event. He didn't speak that much. Uh, mo most of the words were actually spoken by a man. I believe his name was Everett something. I cannot remember his full name, but Everett, I think, sounds right. Um, that did most of the speaking, and then finally he calls on Mr. Lincoln to come up. And Lincoln delivers an address, a short address, but it's an address that will have a huge impact for generations to come. <clears throat> so Lincoln says this. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. <laughs> now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Those were Lincoln's words. 272 words and a very short address that was all he spoke at the ceremony. But these were words that These were words that would impact American history as we knew it. And this would perhaps become known as one of the greatest political speeches of all time, right alongside the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Can you imagine what was going through Mr. Lincoln's mind as he spoke those words? Can you imagine what was going through Lincoln's mind as he traveled to Gettysburg by train? A man that had suffered so much, lost his sons. Willie wasn't the only son that he lost, by the way. He lost Tad and, and 
No, only one of his sons had made it to adulthood. And now that he, now he was the president of the United States and the country was being ripped apart right before his eyes. He was weary and tired. And, that, and now he had the grim task of preserving the Union and bringing us back together. President, President Lincoln uh, Pre President Lincoln was depressed. He suffered a lot. And it's hard, it's hard to fathom just what he went through, whether you agree with Mr. Lincoln or not. And I know a lot don't, particularly people that may feel more allied with the Confederacy, but that's besides the point. I'm not here to discuss that. You can't deny that Lincoln did what he thought was right. And reuniting the country. And bringing us together and preserving the Union. The Civil War would go on for two more years after that. When the Confederates finally surrendered. And Lincoln... Lincoln would not see, live to see his, the dream fully realized. He would live to see the end of the war, but not live to see the last army surrender. Not live to see how the country would change as he tragically, on the night of April 14th, 1865, would succumb to, he would, he would be a, uh, shot in the back of the head by an assassin named John Wilkes Booth. And the next day, April 15th, 1865, at 7.22 a.m., President Lincoln would succumb to his wounds and be the first president in American history to be assassinated. This, the dream that Lincoln had for his country. Whether you agree with Lincoln or not, he's someone that I feel like I can let... I can... He's someone that I feel like inspired generations of Americans. And he wanted to see this country united, not divided. That's really all I have to say. But as I leave, just remember this day. November 19th. It was, it was 1863. And President Lincoln got up there and delivered that address. The Gettysburg Address. He delivered that address that would change American history. And he, he did it despite being in so much pain and agony from what he saw in this country. And what, he, what was happening in this country. Just remember. Not to take our freedom for granted because people fought and died for them. And I'm not just talking about the Civil War. I'm talking about the Revolutionary War. World War One and World War Two, Korea and Vietnam, and the list goes on. Americans fought and died for you. But I do not want you to forget the sacrifices that were made in the Civil War.
Now those are a particularly sacrifices that are being taken for granted this day and age. And I'm not going to get into that because you know exactly what I'm talking about. But it cannot be denied that people died in the Civil War for us. People died for you and for me. And we can't take those sacrifices for granted, ever. Anyway, that's all I have. Please enjoy. I hope you enjoy the video. and Just remember these words. Remember them.